wouldn't you like to do something meaningful in your lives? Right? Huh? Instead of just going to university, taking a job, boring it is, as it is, well, I decided to, to do a different path. All right? I like to fly helicopters. I want to be in helicopters. I want to do something different. So that's what I did. I, did, uh, I flew in helicopters for 20 years. Uh, I had an aerial photo photography business. And uh, beside that was my son. And I could fly as high as I wanted, where I wanted. I could just tell the pilot, let's go up to 8,000 feet. This is 8,000 feet up in the sky, Kuala Lumpur. Now, who can do that? All right? You can if you want to. If you want to do it, you can do it. Don't listen to anybody who tells you otherwise. All right? But now today, there's a new frontier. What is the new frontier? Well, in a way, I sort of lost, uh, lost a lot of jobs because couldn't fly in helicopters, too expensive. So, had to do a different way. Go up in drones. All right? So, we will, I was one of the early adopters for drones in Malaysia. And uh, uh, thinking about what drones can do, basically, they can do everything. All right? Um, but the experience that I had in the aviation, in the, in the aerial photography uh, sector, sort of contributed to my knowledge than what I know today. Because um, if you look at it, uh, drones are here to stay, and drones will never go away. So there's much more to come. So what I decided to do, I decided to be an activist. As you see in my profile, I call myself a drone activist, or sometimes a drone advocate. Lah. Huh? So I joined uh, MUDAS. MUDAS is a Malaysian unmanned drone activist society. So what do we do? Huh? We help the community for the advancement and development of drones in the country. All right? And we do fun things. You know, we get to play, but at the same time, we get to learn. So you'd be wondering, how does drone come with STEM? You know, I don't know, but it's technology, right? From my knowledge in drone technology, I mean, in aerial photography and dealing with the relevant authorities in Malaysia, so there is a problem at that time. We're talking about, just imagine that everyone flies drones today. Would it be a nightmare? All right. So these are the concerns that the authorities have. And actually, in Malaysia, what we have here is the CAR 2016. These are, uh, this is part of the Civil Aviation Authority, Malaysia, that they carved out rules and regulations, not just for drones, but the entire aviation uh, sector in Malaysia. So a part of that is actually how do they tackle drones? All right. But Early days, when I went to talk to them on behalf of the community, I told them, if you want to have uh, drone innovation and you want to bring in the regulation, there should be a balance there, all right? There should be a balance between innovation and also regulation. So you've got to look in different parts of it. Can you decipher that, okay? If you want to be a drone pilot today, you have to raise your game, all right? Stop being an amateur from an enthusiast. Stop being an amateur. You go into the profession. If you are going for drones and you're going to consider it as a career, you've got to raise your game. And in, when I say raise your game, you've got to go through a myriad of, of rules and regulations and permits with all the necessary agencies. So it could be daunting. But hey, this is what you need to do. All right? I'm not uh, saying that you shouldn't, but you need to raise your standard, and then from there, you can earn money the right way. So actually, part of MUDAS is that we advise all our community that, look, this is what we should do. So we devised up a single uh, pager over there telling you what you can do and what you cannot do. A lot of people, especially drone pilots today, now these are so, uh, commercial pilots, they come, they are very good at flying. Okay, they are very creative. They do the videos, the mapping, whatever. Then I ask them, do you have the necessary credentials to fly? Do you have the necessary permits to fly? And some of them say, oh, what permits? Do I need permits? I said, yes, you do. 
because you are a commercial aerial photographer or commercial drone pilot. When you're earning people's money, you become a commercial uh, pilot. So you have to have the necessary, uh, what do you call it, permits to fly and also the credentials. So we always encourage uh, the community to fly responsibly. Why fly responsibly? Because that's how it is. Because you're flying in an airspace that is shared by friends and other drone uh, pilots as well. So you've got to look at that. One of the quantum leaps I say from our side, from my side actually, was being part of the panel to actually devise drone piloting uh, curriculum for the pilots in Malaysia. So we worked with the JPK, they are under the Human Resources Ministry, and we created this very important curriculum for drone pilots. So what's the future for you guys? Let's say, for instance, if you want to be a drone pilot, you may want to take up this course right now. All right, take this course up and then get yourself certified. Use it as a career. Just now I showed you a slide on the My Digital Maker Fair 20, 2017. I had parents coming up to me and saying that uh, drones of a, uh, is it a toy? So I said, well, if you think it's a toy, then you're, you're mistaken because I have a drone cage here and we're doing fun fly. I have a, a section here which has uh, workshops teaching kids how to build drones. That's the next one I want to show you. And of course here, these are some commercial uh, drone companies and they're hiring drone pilots today. What? Hiring drone pilots today. So yes, the fourth industrial uh, revolution has arrived and we are having drone pilots. But to be a wholesome uh, drone pilot, you need the protection. You know, it's just like when you drive a car, you have your car, your car insurance. So you, you, we, we look at that. So I personally have to see what does a drone pilot need, all right? So he needs drone insurance, very important, all right? So how does that relate to STEM? I'm a very key, I don't know whether I'm an influencer or not, I wouldn't go as far as that, but I see uh, the passion in me to merge drones and STEM is, is actually very much interrelated. As, as you know, STEM is a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In Malaysia, we have a human capital crisis. We need to help our kids to go into STEM. Now, our percentages need to be raised up so that the kids have an inclination to science and technology, not at the age of 15 years old when they, when they decide to go either left or right, whether they want to go to arts or science or commerce, or whether they want to go into STEM. Now, we are trying to get them to start thinking about STEM from the age of four, five years old. That's what they need to do. And having drones uh, play a part makes it easy for us to let them play, all right? And what I did was, I was thinking, now, how am I going to do this, all right? Get the kids involved and excited about it. So about two years ago, what happened? I do a lot of exhibitions, showcases, what have you, go to schools, go to show, we did all the science fair circuits and all. Every time the kids come, they look at the drones and they say, wow, it's very nice, very, very interesting. But then when I was, there was a few occasions that I noticed. We also had a drone build out ice cream stick. And you know what? The kids, all of them gravitated to the ice cream stick. My goodness, that was an aha moment. You can call it a quantum leap if you want to. But that gave me an impression. And I was thinking, why is he looking at that? There's one boy, 10 years old, five minutes, he just sat down and he just looked at the drone. I couldn't believe it. There were so many more exciting, very high quality drones around him, but he was looking at the ice cream stick drone. And then I figured it out. He could relate to it because he plays with ice cream sticks. He eats ice cream every day. You know, think about it. So that inspired me to actually conduct workshops. Okay, those are my workshops. You can see just before that. So we begin by letting them build seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, building ice cream stick frames. 
okay, the drone frame. We, of course, we mentor them and we put the components on top of it. Now, just to advise you, the components that we put over here, as you can see, these are real hobby grade components. This is not toy grade, you know. We're going straight so that they can actually learn how to solder at the age of eight years old. Now, parents need to understand that. They need to bring the kids in and expose them, experience science and technology, get into IoT, get into electronics, so that the kids can be more well-informed. Because when they come up at 10 years old, they, they will ask their parents, uh, where can we, what can we do? Oh, let's go to the mall and just have a day out and all. So, ah, the mall, okay? Talk about the mall, all right? Okay, this is what the ice cream stick uh, in its finality looks like. After we do this, then we fly. And we do this all in three hours. I can do this in three hours. Why three hours? Because I want them to have the initial experience of building a drone. And when they build a drone, then they get inspired. And that's what I want. I want them to be inspired. Because if they have that opportunity to be inspired, they can learn more things and they can gravitate towards science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's so, so important, guys. All right. So coming back to the mall, right? All right. So why the mall? Why is the mall so important? Because we in Malaysia, I can't say about other countries, we live in a very humid, hot country. So our, uh, ayo, let's go to the mall, aircon. We need aircon. We can't live without aircon. So families gravitate towards aircon. And I noticed that families don't take their kids to the mall, to the, to the science fair. So what happens? So we go to the mall. All right, so I take the idea of the concept of taking the science fair to the mall. And uh, what we did was, uh, under Tinker Invent, this is, a, this is actually a very close collaboration, myself and my son, all right, for Tinker and Invent. Daryl is a, a bona fide example of how you can get kids inspired in science and technology, all right, unless you do it as a parent. Now, you guys are in university. How are you going to uh, nurture and mentor your sons, okay? You guys know it already, but what about the rest of the community? Those who are walking around the malls, all right? So this is what we did. And, you know, the, the passion that we have. So we have a movement, we call it Malaysia Makers, and we're moving and bridging communities in STEM, okay? I must admit, a few years ago, STEM wasn't really in my mind. I was just thinking about the science fairs and all. But STEM right now, as everyone knows, is so, so important. We got to help our kids. You can't expect the school teacher to mentor the kids for seven hours. You have 24 hours in a day. Seven hours is not enough, okay? So we need to provide after-school programs for the kids so that they will be inspired and have the bridging for all of these activities for the children. So that's so important. So you've got to look, you know, it's not just a teacher problem, it's not just an academia problem, it's not just an NGO problem, but industry comes in, okay? Industry comes in, we have communities. Parent, in Malaysia, we call it PIBG, the Parent Teachers Associations. They get involved. And everyone gets involved and comes together, and that is what I call STEM revolution. You can call it another quantum leap if you like. All right. Uh, this is my, my dear collaborator, Mr. Ramesh, and we are running something very interesting because I can't do it alone. As I mentioned, we need to work as a community. And as a community, when we come together, we can do wonderful things. So this is so, so important. And the, the thing about it is that when, when, when I talked to Ramesh and we said, let's do it, hey, how to find money, lah. how to do this, lah. You know, let's do a very good proposal and all things. I said, enough of all that, let's just do it. And we decided to do it, we go forward and we did it. Now, isn't that interesting? If you have an idea, you like it, just do it. Everything else will come naturally, all right? We've just opened a space in Diamond Mall, 6,600 square feet of space for kids to come in, experience, enjoy. 
at the same time. It's in a mall, so it fits that, that, mall, uh, that mall mold. And we can't do this without the collaboration of industry or commercial partners. All right? So we come together and we did it. Yesterday was World Science Day. All right? And we had the blessing of the Ministry of Education. And we were so happy, so aesthetic. I wear my T-shirt proudly stating that we can do it. No, don't talk about resources, just do it. And that is how we are. World Science Day is in front of you, we just did it. Without the participation of, uh, of commercial like Diamond Mall under the KL Pavilion Group, they really helped us a lot. All right? They handheld us because we are more community-minded than ROI-minded. So we have about close to 50 STEM partners coming in as a community, and that's how you do it. So think big, build a STEM community today. Thank you.